Headlines, Tuesday the 13th of January 2009. Bush defends legacy in the final media conference. George W. Bush has passionately denied that his turbulent presidency had damaged America's moral standing in the world in a farewell White House news conference. Armed holdup at King's Cross ATM. Robbers have targeted security guards loading an ATM in Sydney's King's Cross. Australian woman jailed for insulting Kuwait leader. A Sydney woman is in a Kuwaiti jail facing a possible five-year sentence on a charge of insulting the nation's ruling emir, despite the fact she doesn't know who he is. Loophole sees 19,000 criminals cleared. Unemployment to hit 500,000 in 2009. Paula Wright to quit politics. Beachgoers warned over sea kitten attacks. Matthew Hayden retires from test cricket. Ending months of speculation, Australia's legendary test opener Matthew Hayden will tonight call time on his stellar career at the pinnacle of world cricket. From Piers Ackerman, fishy odour as Peter lures hapless donors. The stereotype of the harmless British eccentric dressed perhaps in ill-fitting knitted clothing of his own design was once a staple of comedy. It's a pity that today's eccentrics are not as benign. Take the nauseating international lobbying groups such as Greenpeace and more recently People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals, PETA, which calculatingly target those in whose veins flow the milk of human kindness and then siphon off as much of that milk as possible before the hapless donors discover they've been hit by professional leeches. There is little Greenpeace will not do to raise funds from people whose only flaw it is that they cannot comprehend that an organization which boasts its good intentions would actually fabricate untruths and falsify evidence to bolster its extremist environmental campaigns. It has been serially caught out with its fraudulent claims that certain industries have released dioxins, notably the New Farm Fertilizer Company in Victoria, but linking the words green and peace triggers such surges of empathy among some that they are blind to the global pressure group's flaws. Peter stepped in where Greenpeace stepped off, directing its campaign at young women particularly who hope to make their mark in the world of acting and modeling. Few ploys are guaranteed to gain as much attention as a naked young woman, and despite Peter's anti-fur demonstrations being little more than a blatant appeal to sexism, the feminist lobby was as silent about the unclad protesters as it had been about Islam's treatment of women as lesser beings. Peter was able to recruit a clutch of high-profile representatives from among the usual coven of semi-celebrities, hoping to lift their magazine profiles from the thoughtless banality to at least the level of fingernail clinic intellectualism to spearhead the push against mulesing of Merino sheep. Anyone familiar with the production of fine wool would be aware that the Merino breed, which furnishes the world's better quality suiting, has wrinkly skin beneath its woolly fleece. That skin is particularly vulnerable to fly strike, especially from around the sheep's breech, where the wool is more likely to be damp and dirty from urine and feces. Mulesing is the best means of protecting fly struck sheep from a lingering and painful death. Empty headed fashionistas and animal liberationists do not know this, however, possibly because merinos really make an appearance in the inner urban salons and cafes where latte is served. I note that Peter and Greenpeace have yet to address the issue of dugong hunting by Australian Aboriginals. I also note that the hero in Tasmania who saved his 13-year-old cousin from a sea kitten had to assault the sea kitten to do so. I still think he deserves a bravery award. As for the sea kitten, I think the fins would be very tasty in a seasonally warm water with spices, Japanese style.